On today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, is Jalen Hurts the best quarterback in the league right now when it comes to playing behind on the scoreboard? Is the Dallas rivalry still as strong as it used to be? LOE 3, all that and more on a Friday edition of Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepickscom slash NFL and use the code LOCKDOWNNFL in all lowercase for a first deposit match up to $100. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm Louis DiBiase, joined as always by Gino Camilleri. It's Dallas Week, Eagles, Cowboys this Sunday. At Lincoln Financial Field, huge matchup here for the Birds as they have an opportunity, Gino, to get to 8-1. and one. And crazy enough, I want to start by talking about Jalen Hurts. And this is actually the first time he's playing Dak Prescott since 2021, Week 2. I mean, the narrative, the way it's changed surrounding Jalen Hurts since that point is incredible. But it's just kind of funny. Each team, I feel like, has been taking turns having their backup quarterback in. This is the first time that we're actually going to see the battle that I think that we've wanted. And yeah. it's kind of funny that the narrative around Dak Prescott in Philadelphia was at first he looked better than Carson and that Carson was clearly better than him. And then all of a sudden he becomes better than Carson again and Carson goes down and then Jalen comes in. He looks better than Jalen. Now Jalen looks to be the better guy, but we have to give Dak his respect. I think in this conference alone, Lou, he's probably the second or third best quarterback a, as we speak, right? And Jalen Hurts is probably the only guy competing at a better rate and throwing at a higher clip from the pocket than Dak Prescott has been. And you're just going to look at those six yards on the ground last week and say, he's probably going to do something similar in the air this week mm. because he can't move. I'm assuming he still can't move from that bone bruise. But that's a banged up secondary that you're going against in in Dallas. Yeah, they make plays on the balls, but they're also susceptible to big plays, much like Washington. So I think it's going to be a big week for the quarterbacks and may the best quarterback win this division, man. If you want to win this division for the first time that any team has gone back to back in nearly two decades, it comes down to quarterback play. It's as simple as that. Yeah, there have definitely been more ups and downs with the Eagles quarterbacks compared to Dak Prescott, right? I feel like Dak has kind of always been that fringe, like, 10th best quarterback to 13 like he's always in that spot he might have Mm -hmm. a really good year and then he might have a pretty average year and he kind of averaged out at some point throughout his career whereas the Eagles yeah you've got the 2017 season of Carson Wentz where he's better than Dak 2019 he's better than Dak then of course he completely collapses and Jalen Hurts you're like is Dak Prescott almost the ceiling of Jalen that's kind of where I thought Mm. My head was at in 2021. I said, best case scenario, he can be Dak. And now Jalen Hurts has exceeded those expectations. I don't think Dak Prescott, even in his best years, going back to like 2016, 2018, even the last few years, I don't think he's ever been at the ceiling of what Jalen is now. Well, I mean, it speaks for itself, right? When you have Jalen Hurts, who's already competed in a Super Bowl and came very close to winning a Super Bowl. And right. What has Dak ceiling been? Well, it's been a divisional round exit, much like yeah. the Cowboys. Of the the, they're the Philadelphia century. 76ers of the NFL. Wow. You're probably going to make a they're, lot of people mad. That's they fine. They're second the round heroes. Yeah, you're right. That's unfortunately who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're like the Yankees, too, of the last, like, whatever amount sure. of years, man. Like, they get to play Houston in the ALCS, and that's the banner they want to raise. If like, you need oh, one playoff win, I'll get you one playoff win. If you need two playoff wins, I'll get you I'll one get you playoff one win. Playoff that's win. the yeah. Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And. The thing about that is in such a big market too, how long does Jerry Jones wait and see? Because Marcus on the show yesterday said, this is a big test to see if Dallas can compete with the best of the best in the division. I mean, if this roster, which is, I mean, it's a pretty good Dallas roster in terms of the last couple of years or so, can't get it done with that QB. When does Jerry have to make an upgrade like Howie, right? Like he Mm -hmm. saw Carson was no better than maybe the last guy they had. And it's like, we have to take a a stab and try and get another guy. And boom, you you locked into Jalen Hurts being as good as he is. It's such a tough spot to be in because you have this like fringe top 10 quarterback. Are you going to do better? Especially now when you look at the landscape of it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so you're kind of there in that Minnesota Vikings-esque, but they're a better version of the Minnesota Vikings where it's, 
damn, are we going to be able to do better than this? But we're just not quite good enough. That really is the Cowboys. And as you mentioned, this is a huge test for them. Can they hang with the Eagles, who clearly have exceeded those expectations over the last few years? They have won a championship in the last decade, where Dallas hasn't even been back to the conference championship since VHS was the main playback system back in the 90s. So it's, yeah, it's a really weird spot to be in, and that's kind of what I was nervous. Again, going back to 2021, that's what I was nervous the Eagles were going to become and they're definitely not that. And, Gino, Jalen Hurts, again, he's doing things I never thought he could do. I mean, last week, he has no ability to run the football whatsoever, and yet he threw the lights out of the building in Washington, right? And so you also look at what he also did. He came back down double digits. That's something, again, in a shootout setting, when you need your quarterback to win you the game with his arm, going back to the last time he played Dak, I never thought he could get to that. Not only is Hurts very capable of these comebacks now and throwing to win, Right now, he's actually, according to the numbers, he's the best quarterback in those situations. So Patrick Mahomes is probably the best comeback quarterback in the league. But again, the numbers show Jalen's number one. He's actually won six straight games when his team is trailed by double digits. That's the longest streak of any quarterback since this stat has been kept track of since 1991, which is absolutely incredible. The clutch gene, is it a real thing? I mean, it's hard yeah. to argue against that when you look at the numbers with Jalen Hurts and... That's what made the greats who they are. Mm -hmm. And you always think of the moments. Two minutes left on the clock. You need a score. Who are you going to trust when you need seven points? One of the great quarterbacks that can sit in there, hang in the pocket. And, I mean, in Buffalo, they saw Tom Brady do that to them time and time and time again in Indianapolis with Peyton Manning and Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre. And we were just waiting for that guy. We thought we had it. With Carson, we thought we had that gamer, right? You thought you had that guy. You thought you had that in Carson. Jalen truly is the epitome of getting a guy who was underdeveloped in college, who came to the National Football League with all of the traits in the world. But the one thing that you can't teach is the ability to overcome adversity and win football games when things are going out of control. When you are in 100-mile-an-hour traffic and your car Starts to get a little shaky. Are you able to remain calm under pressure? Jalen Hurts, dude, he does it all the time. All the time. To the point where you're watching that Washington game last week. And yeah, things got a little hectic. But I'm sure your nerves were, they were cool, calm, and collected like mine. Where it's like, this guy's probably going to go and make a play. And we're going to say the same thing on our post game show. Where mm-hmm. we were a little bit nervous, but here he goes again. And hopefully he doesn't have to get into those situations. The deep men can step up. But to know that you have that guy. Yeah. is something you'll never be able to teach. You'll never be able to put a quantitative value to it. It's one of those things that it's just, it's like the wind. Like, I don't know what it's it is. It's cheesy, but, but it's it what just, they call yeah. the, it, the it factor. And I, I hate is. really using that word because sometimes when things aren't quantifiable and it's just a lazy take, but with Jalen, it is truly the it factor. And that's why I guess it really shouldn't be a surprise that he's this good at coming back in football games. I mean, you look at his mental makeup, you look at his college track record, the big games, you look Mm -hmm. honestly, his second start of his NFL career, how he led the Eagles back. And that was a terrible roster against the Arizona Cardinals on the road and nearly pulled off that comeback. We saw it firsthand when he took over for this football team. But again, I always thought, Yes, he has that mental makeup, but also like when you're down multiple scores, when you're Tom Brady in the Super Bowl against the Atlanta Falcons, when you're Patrick Mahomes against the San Francisco 49ers or every game in that playoffs, you have to throw to get back into those games. And I just never thought he could do it. But now you add the passing game, how he's become elite in that way with that clutch gene. And that's why he's the number one comeback kid right now in the league. And the thing about Jalen is – when the game is on the line outside of a couple weeks ago in that Jets game, he doesn't put the ball in a dangerous position to where it's like, oh, now we have to make a, another crazy comeback. He's not right? trying to it's, make the comeback in one play, which is what Carson would do and a lot of quarterbacks. Exactly. That's yeah. why the Jets game was like so weird to me. It mm-hmm. was like that was that was something you had like a minute forty something on the clock. It felt very twenty sixteen Detroit Lions, where we had to make this one big play and boom, Slay comes out there. And he intercepts it, and you got a minute 50 on the clock when you could have came back. Jalen Hurts, he understands the game. He gets the situation. He understands that he is arguably the best player on the field, but he can't be the best player if he doesn't take care of the football, right? And that's the one thing that if he continues to get rid of the last two weeks, he's done a much better job protecting the football, Lou. Then you don't get into these situations where you're down two scores. But to know that you have that guy with the it factor, when everything goes awry, 
even I love that 2021 point you made, even with the roster that might not be that great. Something turns on with Jalen late in those games that allows him to go super Saiyan. That's truly what it is. For sure. All right, Gina, we'll continue with Dallas. we coming up next. Is this rivalry still as big as it used to be? Plus, are we going to see less of Kenneth Gainwell, more of Nolan Smith this week? We'll get into all that and more. we got LOE3 coming your way as well on this Friday edition of Locked on Eagles. which is sponsored by prize picks with the NBA season here. You can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you could take LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at 10 and a half combo of three points made and receptions. This is so cool. I've really never seen anything like this. And somebody like me who loves football and basketball going to be all in on this. Want to play alongside some of Price Picks' favorite players like Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find, now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Price Picks community each week. They even offer a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. That's right. Injury insurance on daily fantasy sports coming to you from Prize Picks. Head over to PrizePicks.com today slash lockdown NFL and use the code lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Once again, go to PrizePicks.com slash lockdown NFL and use that promo code lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. All right, we're continuing on this Friday edition of Locked On Eagles. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. Guys, Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On NFL Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On is going to go live at 2 p.m. Eastern time on every Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Host Tinitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis, Kyle Krabs will break down every game on the NFL slate to get you ready for your team's matchup, your fantasy lineups, betting angles, all that and more. Plus, get the in-depth local analysis from our stable of NFL hosts across the country. We know these teams better than anybody else. Find Locked On NFL Kickoff Live every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time on any Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Eagles-Cowboys this Sunday, the first of two matchups with the Cowboys over the next couple months. Big game, the Eagles have a chance to go to 8-1, and one, and Gino really get a stranglehold, not only on the NFC East, which you would be, what, at that point, two and a half games up on or three games? A little over three games yeah. because you have three games in the win column. Right. You're going to have additional games in the loss column. Yes. It would be great. Yeah, which would be huge. And again, that stranglehold on the NFC one seed as the San Francisco 49ers have lost three straight. Dallas is one of those other teams pushing you. Same with the Detroit Lions, Seattle Seahawks. Just trying to keep pace and really make sure you grab that spot because it's so valuable. So it's a big game in that way, but I almost find myself from a fan perspective. I don't know what you think about this, but when it comes to like this Eagles-Cowboys rivalry, maybe because they haven't played in a lot of big games against each other, maybe because these games have featured a lot of backup quarterbacks over the last few years, maybe just because, again, the Cowboys haven't really been deep into the playoffs. I don't know, man. I find myself like Dallas week is still a big thing in Philly and everybody still hates the Cowboys, but I don't know. I find myself, at least personally, not caring as much about this rivalry. Not to sound like arrogant, but it just feels like we're on to bigger and better things. Which feels great to say against Dallas, by the way. <laughs> I think it's very similar to how I look at Man United being a Manchester City supporter, where it's okay. like, oh, United, you had your time. Like, oh, the, the 90s were great. The early 2000s were great, where it's like, we're trying to compete for Super Bowls, and you guys are trying to still figure out how to get out of the divisional playoff round. Yes. I'm with you there. Like, I'm sorry, Philly fans, but again, it's kind of like Sixers Celtics. I'm just saying. It's kind of like that. As Dak Prescott once said, losers focus on winners, winners focus on winning, and that's what the Philadelphia Eagles have to do, right? They have to focus on winning. But at the same time, I mean, being on these airwaves, it definitely we try to look at it as impartially as, as can be, but – not being in Philadelphia, I think, is probably why we don't think that. Walking That's around fair. the streets, I'm sure you get Dallas point. sucks all the time. You can drink your Dallas sucks beers at the local But see, I still get, like, emotional like and, like, petty with certain fan bases. Like, that Miami week, I was like that. I felt San Francisco is kind of that new rivalry for me. It was Minnesota. I think it's, again, the big game aspect. It was New Orleans for mm -hmm. a couple years there, too. So, I still kind of like don't like teams to a degree from a fan perspective but I don't know there's something about Dallas I just like even Washington I've been more annoyed with over the years because they just always are a thorn in the Eagles side I think it, it'll always 
be something there too because of the national perspective like they're sure. always yeah. a super bowl contender they're always looked at with like a plus one to them no matter what they are and being in philadelphia i i understand it like you're a better team who's done more things in the last decade why aren't people paying attention to us but at the same time that's philly like that's always been philly like nobody likes us nobody's gonna pay attention to us and we really don't care we have to focus on our it's thing annoying, but at the though. same time it is it is like they but get little not... brother treatment even though again dallas hasn't done anything since the 90s it's unbelievable well, that's they how you that's how you lose this argument is is getting yeah. mad at that point right like right. you just kind of well, have to ignore right yeah. like it's it's the michigan michigan state aspect mm-hmm. of it but if Michigan's record was what Michigan state had, but Michigan state stinks. And yeah. that's kind of what Dallas is. Exactly. But I look at it and it's not the rivalry of like the buddy Ryan, Jimmy Johnson, like yeah. booing Michael Irvin when he's, he's clearly injured. But at the same time, I don't think there's a team in sport, even as a Yankee fan, I don't even get hyped up for Yankees Red Sox anymore. This mm-hmm. game, I always can because sure. in the NFC East, Lou, and we saw it with the Washington game, literally anything can happen. Anything can happen in these games. And I think the pride of winning the division back to back is something that I, I still am yeah. like really upset about. Like the Eagles have had many opportunities to play themselves into home playoff games by winning that division and they have let it slip up. Go be that team. Go be the team that breaks the narrative. And how do you do that? You beat your rivals. Like, that's what it is. I think it it probably is the big game aspect because in 2019, it was a whole lot sweeter that not only did you win a do or die game to pretty much clinch the division, but it was against the Dallas Cowboys, right? Mm -hmm. They just haven't had a lot of big games against them. Even though they've been competing, they've both been consistent playoff contenders for the last decade. They, again, just haven't had a lot of, I mean, last year was a big game like late in the year but Gardner Minshew's playing right and the Eagles were so ahead at that point or you know it's Cooper Rush playing against Jalen Hurts so maybe like the fact that in 2021 it was Hurts first Dak but Hurts wasn't at the level he was Mm. here yet so again you haven't really had that Wentz v Dak kind of storyline in a while so maybe this will kind of reignite that this week since you're getting Hurts Prescott I think the last time like the rivalry really got to like the Mm -hmm. heat was the game where that opening kickoff they called 2018 yeah 2018 because that was a big game where the eagles had a chance to like start to roll to get towards the playoffs and it was the last of carson wentz right if they lost that game they were going to sit him and Mm. that was the dallas goddard pass interference that got called back where he gets his helmet ripped off essentially and that's like yes every game like that is why we don't like dallas because the calls go their way there's six guys on a fumble and they call it not clear and evident that they pick up the fumble. Oh, you're triggering me talking about this. Yeah, game see, right this now. is what I'm saying. <laughs> These are the things you have to remember. Like, you want to get ready for a game. Like, you they got him back the following year, this. though. At least, yeah. No, oh, I will no, say definitely. again. Yeah, the rivalry isn't dead. I mean, the la- again, 2019 like with the Giants, it's dead. Like, I don't yes. care about the Giants. No, I don't at care all. about New that's, York that's a dead dog walk. Yeah, for sure. I just have noticed, like, I am prioritizing other rivalries more lately. And again, it's it's a big game centered thing, at least for me. Um, but again, Eagles it. fans will always hate Cowboys fans, and it's a big game coming up on Sunday between two very good teams. And again, the Cowboys are one of those teams pushing you in the NFC. Are they one of the top tier teams in the entire NFL? I would say no, but in this conference, yeah, I would say it's them. It's San Francisco, and mm-hmm. at this point, Detroit and Seattle for sure. Uh, Gino, coming up with this game, interesting spot for some role players on offense and defense. You kind of hit on this a little bit Wednesday after the trade deadline. What are we going to see now that they didn't bring in another running back? Are you going to see the same role for Kenneth Gainwell, despite the fumble last week, despite going on Instagram DMS during halftime to defend himself on defense? You didn't add an edge rusher. Is there more of Nolan Smith? Nick Sirianni kind of hinted at some of these things on Thursday. When it comes to Nolan Smith, He did talk about increasing his role, but he did say at the same time to kind of justify why Nolan hasn't been really in the game as much. He's kind of getting that Cam Juergens, Kobe Dean-esque redshirt kind of situation as a Mm. rookie. Which, again, I understood why Jurgens didn't play a lot his first year. Nicobe Dean and even Jordan Davis when Linval Joseph came in, right? There were veterans that were playing well in front of them. Why I kind of disagree with Sirianni's analogy there is... The guy in front of Nolan Smith right now is not Kazir White or TJ Edwards. It's not Linval Joseph. You know what I'm saying? It's not Jason Mm. Kelsey. It's Derek Barnett. So don't give me that and give me more of Nolan Smith in this football game on Sunday. Seriani is a very, I've figured this out. He's not going to give you anything in press conferences that is going to hinder his relationship with the player. 
That'll fair. never happen. He drove me nuts, though. I, and oh, again, yes. you're right. Like you're, that's exactly what it was. But his comments drove me crazy. On oh, I, to- Lou, I totally get it. You're like sitting the there and saying, thing? "Like, what are we missing?" Like the guy yeah. fumbled. It going back to that 2018 game in Dallas. Wendell mm-hmm. Smallwood fumble basically on the goal line. It's like that's that's a situation Kenny could get you into. That's a situation Derek Barnett has gotten you into. Like when when is it going to come where he gets a 15 yard? Uh, personal foul, and that's the biggest contribution that he's made to the team because he hasn't hit the quarterback. Those when was are the last time Derek Barnett made an nuts. impact play? You know, I couldn't tell you the last time I noticed Derek Barnett on the football field you know for a sucks? positive reason. You know what sucks is that the biggest play in Eagles history is always going to have him involved because he <laughs> yeah, walked into that freaking fumble, bouncing into his hands, bouncing into his hands. No, man. I'm with you. And then even like you mentioned the Kenneth Gainwell thing, the comment was interesting. He talked about how, you know, nobody was criticizing Gainwell when he made that great touchdown run against the Miami Dolphins. And then he said, nobody made any comments about Kenny G last year during that incredible playoff run. Last year's the, last year. Well, that's my past. thing is last year is the past. And if you want to use the past to justify defending a player, Rashad Penny's pass is better than Kenneth Gainwell's. He should be RB1 at this point. To this day, Kenneth Gainwell hasn't had the kind of run that even Boston Scott had at the end of the 2019 season to help win the NFC East. So to use the pass to justify now why he's on the football field or to use that playoff run, when honestly, he had one good game against the Giants. The rest of him, he had 21 yards in the Super Bowl, averaging Mm. three yards a pop. So the justification for... Kenny G playing and Nolan Smith not. Again, you're 100% right. Sirianni, his intention is good. It's to defend his guys, which I love. I don't want him going out there in a press conference and dogging Gainwell. But the actions is where I want like some accountability, right? I want less of Kenny G and more of Nolan Smith. It will be interesting to see if he stands by his word on Sunday and it's kind of the same thing. But I I think it's got to change on both sides of the ball, at least in those two roles. It's not a make-or-break thing. Again, DeAndre Swift is the workhorse running back. And, you know, you have two insanely elite edge rushers, Mm -hmm. you know, that are playing the majority of the snaps, you know. But, again, it's nitpicky because this team is so good. But that is something I'd like to see more of heading into the second half of the year. Yeah, two very hypocritical points I take away from that is, like, if we're looking at the past, it's like, oh, so you're going to base how Jalen Hurts is as a quarterback off of 2021. Sure, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, and then to the point... Again, why would Rashad Penny not be playing then if you're talking about the past? That doesn't make sense. And then to the point where it's kind of like a redshirt, well, Tyler Steen, he showed better reps than Suo Peta, and he's probably going to get the start come Sunday. So there's there's a lot of hypocritical things that they say, but... To take away, Nick is the coach. I'm sure behind closed doors, him and Howie have these conversations for sure. But we'll see. I mean, the snap counts come Monday will be a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. I'll probably try and chart the running back snaps in that game because it'll be very intriguing. But at the end of the day, Lou, I mean, if you're not going to give the hot hand to somebody that's going to ride it efficiently, it's going to come back to bite you in big moments, man. Like Quez Watkins in the Super Bowl in a big moment. Did that player make a play for you? Nope. It cost you a football game. Could that happen yeah. again? It could. And again, Sirianni love that he defends his guys, but he has been a little bullish sometimes on players that just don't deserve it. Right. And I think Quez yeah. Watkins, you make a great point comparing the Gainwell situation to Quez. There were too many games last year and this year where Quez is getting reps that he just shouldn't. I totally agree. And the, interworkings between like the positional coach and the offensive coordinator and the head coach and the GM. There's so many things that are pulling it in different directions, right? But at the end of the day, one thing that doesn't lie, the tape, are you making plays? Are you not making Mm -hmm. plays? Are you being somebody like Kenny who's fumbling the football in big moments and, Oh, nobody was commenting when he scored that touchdown. Well, it's like, cause he was already in a Valley and he just got out of the Valley and now he has to continue his trek forward to getting back into your good graces. Like that's what we're talking about. That's why you can't take those little things. We can't give attaboys and like pats on the back here. Nick Sariani. I get where he's coming from, but actions speak louder than words. All right, Gino, we got LOE three coming up next presented by FanDuel. One thing I can hint and tease at, I will not be betting on Kenny G. So we'll get into all that more coming up next right here on lockdown Eagles. One thing that is reliable, that is DoorDash. If you need food, if you need some groceries, all you have to do is go on your phone, download a little app called DoorDash, and you can sit on your couch, and all of a sudden, all of that is going to show up at your front door. And you could get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. How can I do that, Gino? All you have to do is use the promo code 
LOCKED23. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-2-3 on checkout at your first order. If you live in Philly, you want to grab a De Rossi steak before the game, grab a Santucci's pie for everybody coming over, grab a bunch of Wawa hoagies, get some groceries from Wegmans. You could do that all on the DoorDash app. We appreciate the heck out of DoorDash. I can literally, while Lou's doing an ad read, get food ordered to my house to show up by the time that this is over. And you can as well get 50% off your $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. Use promo code LOCKED23, subject to to change, terms do apply. This is the Locked On Eagles podcast. One final segment before Dallas Week, Eagles-Cowboys this Sunday at the link. And, of course, you know we wrap up the show, as we always do on Fridays, with LOE3 presented by FanDuel, the official sports book of the NFL and the Locked On Podcast Network. And, man, finally, we got on the board in a great way. We both went 2-1. and one. It's the first time this year that we both finish over 500. So I'm pumped about that, and I'm hoping this is a change of the tide and I'm going to start to cook up. Because you've been doing better than me this year for sure. Last week I had a big day just betting on that big three through the air. It's a marathon, not a sprint when it comes to any sort of betting. And we bet responsibly, right? Like our units might show that we're down, but we're not doing anything outside of our means. But at the same time, Lou, I'm keeping us afloat. Our units from last year are keeping mm-hmm. us afloat. And I think we were close to going 6-0 and oh last week. We had DeAndre Swift and Dallas Goddard just a few yards off. We're getting there. Yep. Hopefully this is a nice little get off of the road. That was a detour back onto the highway. These last yep. two weeks, we get the buy, we collect ourselves and we come back and we crush the second half of the season. Slowly, but surely. And Gino, you know, the theme of these bets, it's going to be the passing game because the Dallas Cowboys secondary, very susceptible. You even saw last year against Gardner Minshew, the Eagles. I mean, they lost the game, but it was a shootout mm-hmm. with Minshew throwing the football. So I think that theme is going to continue. And we both start with a Jalen hurts bet. I have the over on one and a half passing touchdowns last week. He had four, 300-plus passing yards for you, for Jalen Hurts. That's plus 370 odds, mine at minus 102. But, yeah, I think, again, the run game has been struggling a little bit. I love the matchup for the passing game. Hurts has been on fire through the air. So has A.J. Brown. I think that's going to continue on Sunday. I was looking at the Jalen Hurts passing props, and it was, like, plus 190 at over 275 yards. I'm like, you know what? Let me just get. A, an additional 200 points there go to plus 370 and 300 yards the way I look at it Lou is Jalen Hurts is a 300 yard per from scrimmage per game yeah. type of guy and sure. with his leg being as injured as it is how is okay. he going to get that 300 yards I, like I think yeah. in the air and I, I'm I'm with you man even with Diggs in that in those two games last year Dallas was very susceptible yeah. they are banged up on defense in the middle of the field Leighton Van Der Esch is out so they are going to have some opportunities to make mm-hmm. some big plays. I think Dallas will as well, but yeah. I, I rely on Jalen Hurts throwing the ball, man. He's just putting it on the yeah. dime. These guys, they're not going to be able to match up man-on-man with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith the whole game. I think you just hammer Jalen Hurts to go out there and be the same guy he has been. And I think they're going to rely on him more as a passer in the red zone too, Gino. I think they're going to want to start to feature A.J. Brown more. You saw that touchdown mm-hmm. come from Julio Jones on Sunday. The red zone offense being heating up over the last few weeks, a lot of that because of Jalen's arm. So that's part of my logic to hitting that over on one and a half passing touchdowns. Then we both had the same bet here for Devontae Smith, who cooked the Dallas Cowboys last year. We're both taking the over on 51 and a half receiving yards at minus 114 odds. Devontae, big game last week, seven catches for 99 yards and a 30 eight yard touchdown so I like this one I like the mismatch against Dallas the secondary Devante finally getting more involved in the passing attack last week I think it's gonna be a big game for number six yeah take away everything that AJ Brown did in the last six weeks and it's like oh wait yeah. Devontae Smith was a yard away from having a hundred yard game last yeah. weekend we don't he's even still quietly look at on that. a thousand yard pace you know I was just going to say that. It's like, yeah. he, he's just going to show up and you're going to be like, how does this guy have 1,200 receiving yards at the mm-hmm. end of the season? And yeah. I think this is that game where you're probably going to see a lot of extra f- safety help, push a linebacker over to AJ. I'd imagine tr- so. Try and help out that side of the field. And Devontae, man, like I think you're going to see him on some like some backside ends and some backside di- – some yeah. Doug Peterson 2017 special where it's like three seconds we need this guy to come open in the intermediate deep areas of the field. And 
I think he has like two or three catches mm-hmm. that go for like 25 plus in this game. And no Trayvon Diggs anymore for the Cowboys mm-hmm. secondary as he's out for the year. So going to be a mismatch for one of these. It's already a mismatch for these two receivers against these corners. Somebody's going to get a really good matchup against Dallas's third or fourth best defensive mm-hmm. back for sure. So we're both hammering the over on Devontae, 51 and a half receiving yards. Gino, I'm also going to take Devontae over four and a half receptions, which is at plus 112. But you look at it, he's had three games this year with seven receptions. He had another game with five. Mm -hmm. There's only one game this year that he didn't have at least four catches. So I'm just banking on him getting one more than that. Again, the only game he didn't have at least four receptions was that Rams game back in October where he just had the one catch. Every other game, it's been four plus, and I think it's going to be at least five in this one. I think that with the lack of the run game, if they can't yeah. get it going, it's like there might be some situations where they're back in those third and seven, third and eights. Yeah. Those longer behind the sticks and Devontae's going to be that guy. That and they used targets. him in the screen game. It didn't work against Washington on Sunday, but I think there was like three manufactured behind the line of scrimmage screens for Devontae. Oh, he had one where he, he followed his block yeah. like Quez Watkins should have, yep. and, and he had a nice little pick up there. And yeah, they're they're getting very smart with him. I would like to mm-hmm. see some looks where you put him in the backfield in this game, let Dallas, who has some banged up linebackers, have to figure out how to cover this guy in weird mm-hmm. situations. I'm with you. I think this is a Devonte Smith. Like everybody's going to know that yep. this guy is still here, even as good as AJ is. Type I'm of game. with you. And then Gino, your final bet over 24 and a half total points for the Eagles at minus 108. Love that one. I think this offense is going to continue to heat up here. That just seems like the the bet I took last week with Jalen Hurts yeah. over 38 and a half yards in the air on his longest pass. 24 and a half points. I mean, the last time they didn't hit that was what the Jets game. I think that was yep. the only time all year they haven't hit that mark. So Correct. they're a team that they're going to score points. If they're efficient, they're going to score points. Their red zone efficiency has been much better the last couple of weeks. Dallas, I think, is going to give you opportunities to make plays. At worst, you're going to have three field goals, and I expect three touchdowns. 24 and a half. I mean, they got to score 30 to win this game, in my opinion. So I'm just going to ride with how I see this game playing out. Sure. I'm with you. I like that bet as well. LOE3 always presented by FanDuel, the official sports book of the Lockdown Podcast Network. That's going to do it for Lockdown Eagles right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network for Gino Camilleri. I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. Enjoy Eagles Cowboys. We'll see you after the game for the postgame show. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's go, Birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.